Here is most important data analysis, interview questions, and answers. For freshers to test their skills thoroughly, if they are ready or not for interviews. 1. Can you explain what data analysis is and its importance in making data-driven decisions? Answer. Data analysis is the process of inspecting, cleaning, transforming, and modeling data to discover useful information, draw conclusions, and support decision-making. It plays a crucial role in making data-driven decisions by providing insights, trends, and patterns hidden within datasets. Data analysis helps organizations optimize processes, identify opportunities, and solve complex problems by leveraging the power of data. 2. What motivated you to pursue a career in data analysis, and what specific aspects of the field interest you the most? Answer. I was drawn to data analysis because of its potential to extract valuable insights from raw data. The ability to uncover meaningful patterns and trends in data, and use them to make informed decisions, fascinates me. I'm particularly interested in predictive analytics and the application of statistical techniques to solve real-world problems. 3. Describe a data analysis project you completed during your coursework. What was the problem and how did you approach it? Answer. During my coursework, I worked on a project that involved analyzing customer feedback data for a retail company. The problem was to identify common customer complaints and sentiment trends. I approached it by first cleaning and pre-processing the text data. Then, using natural language processing techniques to extract key phrases and sentiment scores. This analysis helped the company prioritize areas for improvement and enhance customer satisfaction. 4. What programming languages and tools are commonly used in data analysis, and which ones are you proficient in? Answer. Commonly used programming languages and tools in data analysis include Python, R, Skull, and data visualization libraries like Matplotlib and Seaburn. I am proficient in Python for data analysis, which includes data manipulation with pandas, statistical analysis, and creating visualizations using libraries like Matplotlib and Seaburn. 5. How do you differentiate between descriptive and inferential statistics, and when would you use each in your analysis? Answer. Descriptive statistics involve summarizing and describing data using measures like mean, median, and standard deviation. Inferential statistics, on the other hand, use sample data to make inferences or predictions about a larger population. Descriptive statistics are used to understand and present data, while inferential statistics help draw conclusions and make predictions based on sample data. 6. Can you explain the steps involved in the data analysis process, from data collection to drawing conclusions? Answer. The data analysis process typically includes data collection, gathering relevant data from various sources, data cleaning, identifying and handling missing values, outliers, and inconsistencies, data exploration, exploring data through summary statistics and visualizations, data preprocessing, transforming data for analysis, including feature engineering, statistical analysis, applying statistical tests and models to answer specific questions, data visualization, creating visual representations to communicate findings, drawing conclusions, making informed decisions or recommendations based on analysis results, reporting, documenting the analysis process and findings for stakeholders. 7. What is the importance of data cleaning and preprocessing in data analysis? And what techniques have you learned to handle messy data? Answer. Data cleaning and preprocessing are essential because they ensure that the data used for analysis is accurate and reliable. Techniques I've learned include handling missing data imputation or removal, dealing with outliers clipping or transformation, standardizing data, and encoding categorical variables when hot encoding or label encoding. These steps ensure that the data is suitable for analysis and modeling. 8. Describe a situation where you had to handle missing data in a dataset. 
How did you approach it? Answer, in a customer survey dataset, I encountered missing data in the income variable. I employed imputation by replacing missing values with the median income of the available data. This approach preserved the overall distribution of the data while filling in missing values and allowed me to continue the analysis without significant bias. 9. Can you discuss the concept of data visualization and its role in data analysis? What visualization tools have you used? Answer. Data visualization is the graphical representation of data to aid in understanding and interpretation. It plays a crucial role in data analysis by making complex information more accessible. I've used tools like Matplotlib and Seaburn in Python to create various types of charts, such as bar charts, line plots, scatter plots, and heat maps. Effective data visualization enhances communication and helps stakeholders grasp insights quickly. 10. How do you decide which visualization type, for example, bar chart, scatter plot, is most appropriate for a given data set or analysis? Answer. The choice of visualization type depends on the data and the goals of analysis. Bar charts are suitable for categorical data, while scatter plots are ideal for showing relationships between two continuous variables. Line charts are useful for tracking trends over time. I consider the data's nature, the questions to be answered, and the audience when selecting the most appropriate visualization type. 11. What is Exploratory Data Analysis EDA, and why is it a critical step in the data analysis process? Answer. Exploratory Data Analysis EDA involves visually and statistically exploring a dataset to understand its characteristics, patterns, and potential outliers. EDA is critical because it helps uncover insights and hypotheses, identify data issues, and guide subsequent analysis steps. It sets the foundation for more in-depth analysis and ensures data quality. 12. Explain the concept of correlation. How do you interpret positive and negative correlations in data analysis? Answer. Correlation measures the strength and direction of the relationship between two variables. A positive correlation indicates that as one variable increases, the other tends to increase as well. In contrast, a negative correlation means that as one variable increases, the other tends to decrease. The correlation coefficient ranges from minus one perfect negative correlation to one perfect positive correlation with zero indicating no linear correlation. Interpreting correlations helps us understand how variables are related. 13. Can you discuss your experience with hypothesis testing and significance levels in statistics? Answer. Hypothesis testing is a statistical method used to determine if there is a significant difference or relationship between groups or variables. It involves formulating null and alternative hypotheses, selecting a significance level, and conducting statistical tests, for example, t-test, chi-squared test. The significance level represents the probability of making a type I error rejecting a true null hypothesis. I've applied hypothesis testing in various scenarios to make data-driven decisions based on statistical evidence. 14. Describe a situation where you had to analyze time series data. What methods or techniques did you apply? Answer. I worked on a project involving the analysis of stock price data over time. I applied time series analysis techniques, including moving averages, exponential smoothing and autoregressive integrated moving average ARIMA modeling, to identify trends, seasonality, and make short-term predictions. Time series analysis is valuable for understanding data patterns that evolve over time. 15. What are the key metrics and measures of central tendency you would use to summarize and describe a dataset? Answer. Key metrics and measures of central tendency include mean, the average of the values, median, the middle value when data is sorted, mode, the most frequently occurring value, these measures provide insights into the central location of data and its distribution. 
16. Have you worked with any data analysis libraries or software for example, Python libraries, Excel during your coursework? Answer. Yes. I have experience using data analysis libraries in Python, including Pandas, NumPy, Matplotlib, Seaburn, and Scikit-Learn. Additionally, I am proficient in using Microsoft Excel for data manipulation, analysis, and visualization. 17. How would you approach analyzing categorical data, and what methods can be used for categorical data analysis? Answer. Analyzing categorical data involves techniques such as frequency tables, bar charts, and chi-squared tests. I would create frequency tables to summarize categorical variables and visualize them using bar charts to understand distributions and relationships between categories. Chi-squared tests can assess independence or association between categorical variables. 18. Can you explain the importance of data ethics and data privacy in data analysis, and how would you ensure responsible data handling? Answer. Data ethics and privacy are crucial in data analysis to protect individual sensitive information and ensure ethical data usage. To ensure responsible data handling. 1. I would obtain proper consent for data collection. 2. I would anonymize or pseudonymize data to protect identities. 3. I would comply with relevant data protection regulations, for example, GDPR. 4. I would limit access to data to authorized personnel. 5. I would be transparent in data handling practices while communicating. 19. What are your strategies for handling outliers or anomalies in a dataset during analysis? Answer. Strategies for handling outliers include 1. Identify outliers using statistical methods, for example, z-scores or eCure. 2. Deciding whether to remove, transform, or keep outliers based on domain knowledge and the analysis's goals. 3. Applying robust statistical methods that are less sensitive to outliers, such as the median instead of the mean. 20. How do you stay informed about the latest trends and best practices in data analysis? Answer. To stay informed, I regularly read data science blogs, research papers, and books. I participate in online communities and forums, attend webinars and conferences, and take online courses. Continuous learning and staying updated with the latest tools and techniques are essential in the dynamic field of data analysis. 21. Have you encountered a particularly challenging data analysis problem during your coursework? How did you solve it? Answer. One challenging problem involved. Analyzing unstructured text data from customer reviews to identify sentiment and trends. I solved it by using natural language processing techniques, sentiment analysis, and topic modeling to extract meaningful insights. This experience improved my ability to work with unstructured data effectively. 22. Can you discuss your understanding of A or B testing and its application in data analysis? Answer. A or B testing is a method used to compare two or more versions of a web page, app, or product to determine which one performs better in terms of user engagement, conversion rates, or other relevant metrics. It involves randomly assigning users to different groups A and B, and measuring their responses to make data-driven decisions about which version is more effective. A or B testing is widely used in optimizing websites, marketing campaigns, and product design. 23. Describe a situation where you had to present your data analysis findings to non-technical stakeholders. How did you ensure effective communication? Answer. I presented the results of a customer segmentation analysis to a group of non-technical stakeholders. To ensure effective communication. 1. I used plain language and avoided technical jargon. 2. I created visually appealing charts and graphs to illustrate key findings. 3. I provided actionable insights and recommendations relevant to their goals. 4. I encouraged questions and discussion to clarify any uncertainties. 
24. What are your career goals in data analysis? And how do you plan to continue your learning and development in the field? Answer. My career goal in data analysis is to become a skilled data scientist and contribute to data-driven decision-making in organizations. I plan to continue learning through online courses, certifications, and hands-on projects. Networking with professionals in the field and staying updated with emerging technologies will also be part of my ongoing development. 25. Can you provide an example of how you have used data analysis to solve a real-world problem or make a data-driven recommendation? Answer. Certainly. In a previous internship, I analyzed sales data for a retail company to optimize their product assortment. By conducting a market basket analysis, I identified which products were frequently purchased together. This analysis informed the company's decision to rearrange store layouts, promote bundled products, and optimize inventory resulting in increased sales and profitability. These interview questions should provide a comprehensive assessment of a candidate's knowledge and understanding of data analysis, ensuring they are well prepared for a role in the company. For more exciting tips, tricks and more importantly, for valuable insights of interviews, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. It has a lot of valuable information about various insights of interviews. It has a lot of valuable interview questions and answers of various technologies that will be useful during interviews.